Hello and welcome to the show. I'm Jacqueline Closemore and you're on A1R Psychic Radio and Moonstruck TV. Uh, great to join you again. Uh, this week I'm going down to the country because lockdown number five is over for now. Oh. Uh, and so <laughs> what, I, what I was talking about last week was uh, about space clearing on a place I lived in uh, many, many years ago and how I was called to that place for six months. And it's like, oh, you know, when I got here, I was like, what took you so long uh, was coming from this elderly gentleman uh, in spirit who was still stuck in the house and, um, you know, kind of stuck in 1976, really. And so we talked about last week how, you know, um, he responded better <laughs> to being talked to like a normal human being. Um, if you think of ghosts, you think of spirits, sort of think maybe of door-to-door -door callers, like, you know, those door-to-door -door salespeople, like, hey, would you like to buy a vacuum cleaner? Oh, I've got the one for you. Uh, doesn't mean you have to let them in, does it? You can sort of answer the door and go, no. Uh, and if they're trying to, like, say to you, um, well, he'd help you find Jesus. Uh, I actually, you know, I answered the door once to actual human people, like the living people. He said that to me and I went, didn't know he was missing. Didn't skip a beat. Uh, and then, you know, at the end of that, they decided they wouldn't send any more uh, evangelists to my door because I ended up, one of them came back the next day and talked to me on my, my you know, front steps for like two hours and end up not being in that religion anymore. Uh, Oops, sorry. <laughs> anyway, uh, so, you know, same with ghosts, really, if you sort of think of it. It's like, hmm, hey, how are you doing? Hmm, bit of a conversation, you know, not just get behind me, oh, disincarnate entity. <laughs> you know, because I don't know about you, but if I got talked to you that way, I'm probably not going to hit anyone, but, yeah, I'm not going to respond the best. Maybe my defences will come up. Maybe I'll get, you know, maybe a bit aggro. I don't know. I'm probably, I don't know, I don't think I would, but I know plenty of people would. And you'd kind of understand that, particularly if you're in their house, um, <laughs> you know, or what they think is still their house, which has long since moved on. So it's kind of better to have a conversation. So probably a more logical thing to do, um, which is really helpful to think rationally while dealing with the intangible, because frankly, how else do you deal with it? Because you can sort of lose perspective very quickly. So it's better, you know, someone knocks at your door or, you know, you walk into a house and someone hasn't quite left completely. Um, hey, how are you going? Have a conversation like, who are you? Depending on how you feel, you might say, how could I help you? Uh, but obviously, if they're kind of looking a bit aggro uh, as a person at your door, you're not maybe going to say, how can I help you? You're going to act a bit more defensively. So have the conversation. So if you've got... Um, uh, an energy coming to you when it's like, you know, woo, <laughs> uh, you know, it's like, okay, hi, um, yeah, where are you from? Uh, what's going on, dude? Uh, have a bit of that going on. Um, ask them questions. Uh, see if you feel like you're discerning that this is a good energy or, you know, uh, whatever. Um, and then deal with it, yeah? Uh, so in the case of that passed over guy, uh, I actually asked him questions and he was telling me how his wife had died before him and he was uh, really missing her because he thought that when he, he passed over, she would come to get him and that's when I opened up the portal to, um, you know, connect them. And um, I, I just remember that exchange because he was talking to her and then, he, and then he sort of turned and looked at me and said, I'm ready to go now. And I said, well, off you go. I mean, nothing's holding you here. And he actually thanked me and he, he left and just this absolute huge light went through the place. And he went off into that light with his wife and all the other uh, connections that he had that had passed on before him. And um, yeah, it was absolutely beautiful. I remember just tears coming down my, down my eyes and down my, down my face. And, um, and the Fung Chui lady actually went, oh, okay. <laughs> um, we both learned something that day. Um, but, yeah, so... You know, reason with them if they've been shaving in front of the mirror because what I found was he was shaving in the bathroom in front of the mirror every morning and it's like, hello, hello, he's still shaving. No, not any awareness of me, but we got that happening. We got him across the other side. It was all great. Um, so, you know, logical questions to ask um, a being that's not quite sure that they've left the earthly realms or not, it's clear they have, um, is what year is it? When was the last time you ate something? Um, you know, where are your kids uh, or your family? 
uh, and then they start to recount, you know, the moments in their lives and then it sort of comes to them, oh, hang on, I actually don't feel any hunger. When did I last feel hunger? Oh, because when you're on the other side, you don't feel hungry, you know. Um, I don't know any um, spirits on the other side that want to go down on Friday to have a keg of beer. Uh, I mean, I'm sure there's energies that like beer. They will probably go towards people who like beer. Um, but, you know, they're not actually wanting to consume beer themselves necessarily. I mean, you know, uh, as I said, there's some energies that are attracted to that energy uh, that, you know, they're not going to have drunk or eaten anything lately. Uh, so it's a good question to ask. So once he'd gone, then the feng shui lady was able to just get on with stuff and actually give me really good, um, you know, information on uh, directions, placements. She was brilliant at that. And really setting up my house differently so the energy would flow differently. And this was the last, um, second last rental I ever had, but it was also the first and last house I ever lived on, on the end of a T intersection. <laughs> Boy. Uh, so, you know, you've got all that traffic coming straight at you. Uh, and so there was no great big high hedges, which I'd thoroughly recommend, um, or a great big fence, um, you know, to block that energy just boof coming at you from windows. Uh, so, I put bagua mirrors up and stuff like that, and it felt a lot better there afterwards. But what I noticed was while living there until we dealt with the old guy, um, was every now and again I'd hear this thundering going up the driveway, and I was like, "Is that a truck? Like, it sounds like a truck to me." And all those cable reels, like, what's that? And what I'd seen in my visions, which is why I couldn't recognise this house for six months, I couldn't recognise it from the front uh, because in the visions. I was seeing the house as it was 40 years before uh, when it would have been built. And, um, and, and, then, and at that time, there was all market gardens in that area and this house had a market garden uh, all around it. So I'm looking at market gardens going, where is this place? And then, of course, this real estate agent goes, oh, go to that house. And I'm like, yeah, seeing the pictures of the front of it and going, oh, yeah. <laughs> And as I said, the last time, um, you know, when I forgot out the back door and stood at the back fence and looked at the at, towards the back of the house, it was like, oh, this is that house from my visions. You know, so it was like, oh, this is where I'm meant to be for this period of time. Um, you know, and it was a house in which I had a heck of a lot of growth and change. And um, certainly it, it was um, very secure for my family. Uh, and it was, a, it was a learning curve, that house. Um, but once he'd gone, it was like, oh, so much peace. Uh, and I actually met the next door neighbour after this. Like, it was really weird. I'd been there for quite some time, hadn't seen the next door neighbour, this older guy. Uh, and I went, oh, you know, the guy who used to live here, uh, you know, the Italian bloke. And he goes, yeah. And I said, oh, you know, he was like this and that and he looked like this and that and he had a wife and she wasn't well. Did she have dementia? And, oh, yeah, yeah. And I said, oh, I used to, he used to shave every morning and go down and get the newspaper, watch the cricket. And he goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I said, what were the trucks with the cable reel? Like, what was that about? And he goes, oh, that was from, you know, V-Line. You know, the, you know the, the, he used to ship them here and put them on there and then they drive them here. And, you know, he was involved in that. And I went, oh, and I said, you know, but did you buy this when it was Market Gardens? Oh, yes, yes. He goes, did you know him? And I went, um, yeah, yes. I'd, I'd heard all, all about him. Uh, didn't dare say how I'd heard about him. Uh, but apparently it was his children that were renting the property out to me. And, of course, this was their father. And um, and he told me, uh, you know, over the time, because uh, <laughs> he popped in a few times afterwards once he'd, you know, gotten straightened out about how his children, you oh, know, no lot of respect. Uh, and <laughs> he was really kind of missing them and missing them coming over, you know, in the last stage of his life. And, you know, this next door neighbour, sure enough, had told me, um, oh, you know, his children, you know, they didn't used to see him in, <laughs> in the last bits of his life. So, you know... Um, when you're doing space clearing, there is an element of mediumship there. Um, and when I go and uh, do a, a space clearing on a house, uh, you know, I was talking last time about getting permission before you go in, getting the lay of land. There, there are some things that you need to tell the client and there are some things you're like, mm, that's not going to be so helpful for them or that might give them nightmares. Uh, <laughs> particularly if you've got a rather strange looking sort of thing in the corner of the house. Um, you know, that probably resonates in feng shui with what's called five ghosts, which is the area of the house the old man was living in, by the way. He literally moved into that area of the house that was five ghosts. So 
<laughs> there he was, grumpy old dude, until we said in prayer course. Um, so, you know, um, it's about finding how to balance the elements and the energies. It's not as simple as just burning uh, a special herb like all the time, every time. Because if you've got too much um, fire energy in the house already, then we need to balance it out with water, air or earth or, you know, it, it could be wood. Um, you know, there, there can be different elements you need to use to balance the other elements and that's where a really good feng shui practitioner will know that sort of thing. Um, but when it comes to actually space clearing, the actual energy of it, that's certainly a field I take care of. Um, at times I can help to a degree with placement of things where it's like, well, that just shouldn't, shouldn't be there. <laughs> Wrong spot. Uh, frequently feng shui, which is, is about creating energy flow, uh, actually lines up really well with oh s safety protocols of where to put things. So it's not illogical. Some of this stuff really ties in with common sense. So uh, when you're looking at spirituality, look at how you can tie in the intangible with the tangible, uh, you know, the etheric with the logical and the practical. How we can make this practical? How does it work in your everyday life and make sense that way? That's what's important to look at here and how to make it work for you. Uh, so if you're looking around your home and you're wanting to get someone into space spirit, really look at the fact of, have I actually cleaned up? Have I dusted? Are there rabbit droppings everywhere? Believe me, I actually picked up from a guy. I reckon he got rabbit droppings everywhere. And he goes, no, no, no. Someone got there for me. Rabbit droppings. Yeah, logical stuff first. Anyway, that's me for this week. Catch me next week. Uh, we've got more shows coming up on A1R Psychic Radio Moonstruck TV the rest of this afternoon, evening and morning. Catch you later. Bye.